The general reactivity of carbohydrates reflects the fact that they contain both alcohol or hydroxyl functional groups and a carbonyl group as part of a ketone or aldehyde within their structures. And we've seen these functional groups in compounds previously in looking at laboratory reactions of alcohols and ketohydes. Let's summarize the general reactivity of carbohydrates by enumerating what we already know about the alcohol, ketohyde, and hemiacetal functional groups. Let's start with the cyclic form, which is the more predominant form at equilibrium of the carbohydrate. The anomeric carbon, the carbon linked to two oxygen atoms, in a monosaccharide or even in a polysaccharide, is part of a hemiacetal. Hemiacetals are subject to ring opening. That's actually the reaction from left to right shown here. Opening of the ring, which involves elimination of the hydroxyl group, we could say. And hemiacetals are also subject to nucleophilic substitution, keeping in mind that this hydroxyl group has the potential to act as a nucleophuge or leaving group, especially upon protonation. And an example of this that we've seen previously is acetal formation. So the hemiacetal contains a hydroxyl group linked to the anomeric carbon. To form an acetal, a second equivalent of alcohol, or in this case, the first equivalent of alcohol, comes in and displaces this OH group, usually after protonation of the hydroxyl to form H2O+. In a carbohydrate context, we don't just see alcohols coming in here. Nitrogen-containing compounds and other types of nucleophiles can also engage in nucleophilic substitution reactions at the anomeric carbon. But I want to emphasize that if you want an analogy to all of these reactions, acetal formation is a key thing to look back at. The formation of acetals in simple ketones and aldehydes is mechanistically pretty much identical to these reactions at the anomeric carbon. In both the open and closed forms of the carbohydrate, we find a large number of hydroxy groups, which we can think of as alcohols. Alcohols are susceptible to oxidations, to aldehydes or carboxylic acids. They also contain nucleophilic oxygen atoms, which especially after a proton is removed to form an alkoxide, can serve as great nucleophiles. And the hydroxyl proton is mildly acidic, and so strong bases, alkoxides, and stronger can deprotonate these oxygens to form highly nucleophilic alkoxides. The ketohyde group in the open chain form is also reactive. And here I want to remind you to keep in mind Le Chatelier's principle. Even though the ketohyde is around only in very small concentration because this equilibrium favors the cyclic hemiacetal form, that little bit of carbonyl around can still react completely thanks to this equilibrium becoming established very quickly. And so as we consume the carbonyl group, more of the open chain form is produced and the reaction is driven to completion. And the ketohyde is also susceptible to oxidation to form a carboxylic acid or reduction to form yet another hydroxy group or alcohol. The carbonyl carbon is subject to nucleophilic additions and we can form enolates or enols at the carbon that is alpha to this carbonyl group whose hydrogen I'm drawing here in blue. Finally, that carbonyl group is susceptible to condensations with nitrogen-containing amines to form imines in the case of a primary amine or enamines in the case of a secondary amine. We'll see examples of all of these kinds of reactivity in the ensuing slides.